Thanks, Mars, for the Mad Science update. Uh, the International Potato Center. Yes, there is one. It's on Lima, Peru. Launched a series of experiments to discover if potatoes can grow under Mars atmospheric conditions, and thereby, prove, thereby prove they are also able to grow in extreme climates on Earth. This phase two effort of SIP's proof of concept experiment to grow potatoes in simulated Martian conditions began on February 14, 2016, when a tumor was planted in a specially constructed cube sack contained environment built by engineers from University of Engineering and Technology in Lima or Lima, if you prefer, based on designs in advance provided by advice provided by National NASA Names Research Center, California. Preliminary results are positive. Now, first, we're going to go over very quickly what potatoes are. We all know what they are. We've all, most of us have eaten them and so forth. They remember the nightshade family. They're related to the deadly nightshade. Tubers are edible. Don't guard yourself on the skins, because if you guard yourself on the skins, you'll puke. But, uh, tubers are edible, and they've been an important food source for many people for a long time. Uh, growing crops under Mars-like conditions is an important part of the experiment, says Julio Valdo via Silva, a research associate with SETI Institute, has worked at NASA's Ames Research Center, now works at UTEC in Lima. If the crops can tolerate the extreme conditions we're exposing them to and our CubeSat may have a good chance of, to grow on Mars. We'll do several rounds of experiments to find out which potato varieties do best. We want to know what minimum conditions are the potato needs to survive. Now, CubeSat houses a container holding soil and tuber. Inside this hermetically sealed environment, that's mistake number one, the cube set delivers nutrient-rich water, controls temperature for Mars day and night conditions, and mimics Mars air pressure, car oxygen, and carbon dioxide levels. Sensors constantly monitor these conditions and live streaming cameras Record the soil in anticipation of the potato sprouting. According to CIP prote potato breeder Walter Amaros, one of Ange potato great genetic capacity for adaptation in extreme environments. Now that's a bad sentence. CIP has tapped into that capacity by breeding potato clones at tolerate conditions such as soil salinity and drought in order to help small holder farmers grow in marginal areas that could grow harsher under climate change. There we go again. Uh, in 2016, CIP brought Mars soil from the Pampas de la Joya Desert in southern Peru to its experimental station in La Molina, Lima. There, CIP was able to show proof that potatoes could grow in this dry, salty soil with some help from fertilized earth soil for both nutrition and structure. 
Okay, I'm gonna break this down. <coughs> one one thing they don't talk about is that plants require oxygen. See, one way or the other, we're not being told the truth here. Something is a lie here. Uh, the reason is that all plants require a certain amount of oxygen to live. They require it. It's not an option. And what they did is they put this potato in this uh, CubeSat thing hermetically sealed. That is a terrible mistake. I can't imagine scientists making mistake that bad because what the obvious potato plant would do is it would release oxygen oxygen but it also consumes it now uh, we're going to take a look at the composition of mars martian atmosphere this is according to official numbers co2 95.32 percent Nitrogen 2.7%, argon 1.6%, oxygen 0.13%, 13 hundredths of a percent. That's, my guess is that's not enough to sustain a plant. So, what I'm thinking is they fudge things a little, maybe allowed in a little more oxygen, and, uh, what they should have to start with so the plant could grow, then because this thing is hermetically sealed, the plant produces its oxygen because green plants produce more oxygen than they consume. They do consume it, however, because of... They consume it because they respire the same way that we do. They don't consume as much as we do, obviously not. But they do produce some oxygen. They do consume some oxygen. So one way or the other, we're being given a line of BS here. You can't have it both ways. Did they, uh, 0.13% oxygen? Like I said, it's probably not enough for the plant to survive initially. I suspect they fudged some numbers. Or we're not being told the truth about the surface conditions on Mars. One way or the other, this just isn't going to cut it. Either we're being lied to about the surface conditions on Mars, or they're lying to us about why this experiment was fudged. And good luck figuring out which is which, or both. But the potatoes would need the oxygen in that CubeSat thing to grow. And eventually they would start producing enough for them to respire. Because the way this works is <clears throat> plants consume CO2 in the process of photosynthesis. And then still having little problems in my mouth. Uh, sorry. Uh, plants produce oxygen during photosynthesis because oxygen is a waste product. And then they also consume that waste product as they respire. And then we uh, get into the subject of light intensity, which isn't very high on Mars. I'm wondering, I'm wondering, uh, so much light they fed them too. This whole experiment is suspect, so I'm not 
to thrill with what I'm seeing. Well, I thought they were being given a line of BS, because you can't have it both ways. You can tell me the plant potatoes can grow on the surface of Mars, and then you tell me the oxygen is only 0.13%. No. I've heard that some lichens might be able to live up there or something. Interesting, though. Somebody's giving us a line of BS. And like I said, the article doesn't mention lighting or how these things are going to grow in the extreme cold that's supposedly there. I'm not buying this. I'm sorry. I'm Artifacts of Mars. Thanks for watching.